I would like to take the chance and talk something that's quite close to our hearts. Um, and this is integrating IT and OT. So we started back um, as system integrator before we like uh, founded a company which Frank invested in and integrated the shop floor into OT and IT systems. So like had some consultancy projects and a lot of old machines. And we are the guys in two weeks, please give me all the data and push it into my Thingworks, my MindSphere, my something. And this was quite hard. And this is why we developed a product which makes it way easier to really unite the OT systems, like your PLCs, your SCADA, your DCS, your MES, with the IT systems where you now and also in the future will also create the most value for the company. And the vision that we share, this is also I hopefully why Frank is invested in us, is that we're seeing like industrials like you are becoming tech companies, yeah? So technology is not an enabler for you anymore, but really a source of creating more sustainable products, more innovative products, being more productive, producing at a higher quality. And to leverage that, you really need to become a tech company in your organization and to give you, this slide didn't age that well, <laughs> if you like look at the current press, but Tesla did something that not everybody is capable of. So not only in their product, but also in their manufacturing, they vertically integrated all the technology. So they're not using like the traditional automation standards to integrate into IT, so they can produce at a super low cost with a six higher net margin per vehicle than the competition. If you look at the press now, um, perhaps I need to exchange that slide. Um, but the next one, we are, if you log into their factories, it's ridiculously crazy. So if you go to TSMC, go into their shop floors, there's nobody producing. It's like lights out manufacturing. Yeah? You go into their factories, everything is automated, no people in there, and they do only the hard parts, so only the manufacturing, and outperform their competition by a wide margin. Over half of the market is theirs, and producing there with a four times higher margin than their direct competition, which is actually quite impressive. By only the manufacturing, which in most companies only is that you need to do, but uh, not what you really like to do. And the obvious statement, yeah, if you like, or consulted BCG, McKinsey, Bain over the last five years, you would get something like this. You need to become data-driven, 23 times more likely to outperform your competition, six times more likely to retain your customers that you already have with digital solutions in your products or attached to it, and then also generate above average profit margin. And how you get there is then the question. Yeah? If you want to be data-centric, you need to have all your data in your factory and also on all your systems standardized. It doesn't make sense that in site A, data looks different in site B, in machine A, different in machine B. So you need to combine all the sites with a unified um, naming convention. It needs to be easily accessible, so nobody wants to go to SAP and then fetch the data via an XML file or a CSV export or ask somebody to do something. You want to do innovate on data easily and also quite important, you don't want to get locked in again with a hyperscaler, with, with a hardware provider, so you want to create a modular best in read technology stack. And then you can really make decisions fully transparent and innovate on top of that. So what, why you cannot do it with the current automation stack? So a little bit more specific now. So if you look at the current technology landscape in manufacturing, it's built like a pyramid. You have your PLCs controlling your machines, controlling the sensors and actuators. And this goes level by level into a DCS system who controls a lot of PLCs, an MES system who like sets up work orders, and then an ERP. It's like point-to-point -point connections through the factory. This doesn't integrate well with modern AI, data pipelines, um, web-based technologies, and applications. And it's so hard, like from first experience, based on the current network that you have there to integrate that. It's unsecure, it's uncontextualized, and it's a zoo of protocols and data sources. And this is what we want to tackle. So on the left, I hope it's not in your companies like that, but you have a lot of data sources, databases, PLM, ERP, etc. And where you want to go, the unified namespace, where I'm building the bridge to, is a single source of all your manufacturing data. Yeah? all your sensors, robots, 
AGVs, MES systems, are just producers of data and the consumers like the ERP and MES just can subscribe to data uh, what they're interested in. And, okay, another buzzword, Industry 4.0, digital administration, share digital twin. What is behind that? Actually, if you're ordering at HelloFresh, at Zalando, it's just like that, yeah? You produce data, push it to a message broker, from where like a work order is created, um, and um, somebody packs your package, etc. So it's just IT standard, and we try to make it applicable for manufacturing. But okay, still a little bit complicated, let me break it down for you. So you can imagine it like a news agency. Yeah, you have agents all around the world, some in Sao Paulo, some in North America, some in Africa, and they're all transmitting like a PLC in your factory data. Yeah, so um, as soon as an um, event is happening in South America, everybody in Europe and North America wants to subscribe to something that's happening importantly in South America. And then the same goes then to the New York Times, to the CT Computer Magazine, it goes to every news outlet that you want to see it in. And the same goes then for the unified namespace. All your PLCs and data sources transmit work orders, telemetry data, etc., from the shop floor to the unified namespace. From there, you can integrate into your AI pipeline, make predictive maintenance, create dashboarding solutions, etc. But it's then so much easier you are able to reduce the time to value if having this technological approach. And, but it's still hard, yeah? And manufacturing adds a lot of complexity to that. So you have unstable network connections, yeah? If you like in a site where in East Germany you still have like six gigabit DSL connections, you cannot be cloud native yet. Um, you have a lot of regulations, standards, and compliance. Yeah, you need to adhere to GXP, to Cletus, it's really, really hard. And so you need to build a system, or we build a system, that help you tackle those regulated and um, manufacturing specific requirements. And this is what we do, and also come back with a few customer examples on what we did exactly. Um, we change the unified namespace as these um, assets, devices, and machines with different protocol converters connecting to OPC A, 7S7, Backoff, Rockwell, etc., and fetch all the information from the PLCs. Then they are transmitted, so every event goes into a message broker like the news agency, and from there it will then connect to the ERP system, to an S4HANA, it can connect to an SAP ME, it can connect to every system that you have on the shop floor, or like in Tulip, a maintain X, AWS sidewise, it really doesn't matter, but you now have like detached, like your OT systems, and your IT systems, and therefore can integrate quite easily. Um, and this is actually our product. So um, the United Manufacturing Hub is like a consolidation of all the tools that are necessary to building that. So it connects to the automation pyramid with all the protocols and systems that you have on the shop floor, transmits it to the unified namespace, and stored into the database. Um, and now the question a lot of people still have is, is open source not, not mature? Like only tinkerers are using open source. Um, it's only IT niche, so you use it at home, uh, but I would never build a production system on top of open source. And it's super unsecure because everybody can see my source code. And many more like these things are still on top of mind of a lot of people. And actually the world is running on open source, yeah? So um, all the IT cloud native systems like in AWS, so we rely on Kubernetes which is actually the operating system of the cloud and fully open source. All your operating systems, except Windows, um, are on the cloud side, all open source. All your libraries, et cetera, all open source. So it's highly penetrated the market and it's also reviewed by thousands of people. In all cases, hundreds of developers are actively engaged with our product on a daily basis. And therefore, it's also highly adaptable. And you don't get locked in again. Not locked in again in a 20 year cycle of renewing your ERP system you can exchange, pick and exchange uh, the components that you would like to have. For me, it was quite short. Hopefully you enjoyed a bit of a technical debrief and hope to you reconnect after the speech and feel free to visit the website and join our community as actually this is too large for one vendor, one company. We need to tackle that together in an open source way.